will now apply the gel coat to the inside surfaces of this mould by brush. No release is required as this is silicone. If the mould were to be a rigid mould or a polyurethane mould, then a release agent is required. Many release agents are available on the market. Always use a dry brush. It needn't be new, it can be washed, but always use a dry brush. If you use a wet brush, particularly with a dark colour, you will leave streaks, like white milky streaks, on the surface of the, of the, of the product. So pour a little in. Remember it's water-based and it has a high surface tension. And in order to get pinhole free at the surface, you need to put some energy into it. When you've completed that, make sure that the sides are properly coated and let the brush dictate the thickness. This will be around a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. And the flow of the brush will give you a nice even surface. As we have some material to spare, we have a small mould to hand and we will cast this little object. Again, make sure that you've got good surface contact and then fill. And often helpful for a casting, if possible, is to shake the mould and any air entrapped there will be released. We are now going to make a cast panel as opposed to a laminated panel. And let's just assume that we've never used this particular mould before. You need to calculate the volume, preferably in cc's, turn it into litres, times 1.85 for the specific gravity, and that will give you the weight that you need to use in kilograms. Having calculated the volume we need for the panel and calculated, therefore, the weight, we then weigh out the materials as previously seen. So now we've weighed out the full amount of material that we need. Then pick up the mixer. Again, when you finish mixing, it's important to wash and keep it clean. Again, using a dry brush, pour some material into the mould and make sure that you've picked up all of the surface detail, particularly any complex pieces. Don't be afraid to put some energy into it. When you're satisfied that you've got all of the detail and you've been around the edges and into the corners, simply pour and allow to set. Remember that you can wash your brushes in water and providing they're dry, they're suitable for the next use. Because you can wash your brushes easily, you will save considerable money over the course of a year. We're now going to cut the fibre reinforcement. In this instance, this is a triaxial stitched glass fabric. The roving is sized with starch. This allows it to break down in the water-based environment of the Masterworks product. Because the material is a stitched glass and the bundles are free to move around, care needs to be taken when handling. One of the best surfaces to cut the material on is MDF, as it has no grain. And one of the best ways to cut the material is with what we refer to as a pizza cutter. It is, in fact, a very sharp pizza cutter. Having cut your fabric to size, we now need to prepare the material to make the laminates. As a general rule of thumb, roughly three times the amount that you use for the gel coat will produce your laminated structure at around quarter of an inch thick, which is plenty thick enough because of the stiffness and the yield given by the structured fabric. Having weighed out the two components, we need to pigment it to the same color as the gel coat. Not only does this make the product look as if it was meant to be, if there are any pinholes in the gel coat, you won't see them when you put the backing on. You obviously don't need any thickener for the backing mix. Pour a little on the back of the gel. And make an even coating. Now pick up the first layer of the fabric, place it onto the tool, work into position with the brush, just enough material to wet it through. Now you heard me mention that you only need two layers. It is however important that these two layers are spaced apart. 
One of the easiest ways to make a spacer layer is to take not all but the majority of the remaining material, put it into another pot, and add some chopped fiberglass strand. By weight you would add about 5%, but you can also add this generally to taste. You need to create a thickish, but not pasty, flowable mixture. And then brush that evenly around between minimum of an eighth of an inch up to a quarter. Remember, the further apart the two layers, the stiffer the panel will become. Place it on the back. This is all in one operation. This is very similar to the first one. And just to finish it off, put the balance of the material. And again, go around the edges first. And finish the back, the panel, as nicely as you can. 